Hello YouTube viewer, I know you are here because you're interested in Sky Strikers, which is what I like to hear. Um, I'm here to show off my deck list as far as Sky Strikers going first. I do have another one that goes second that I'll actually probably post tomorrow. Uh, because I do think Sky Strikers definitely strive and are better going second. Um, but in this format in Master Duel where we don't have a best of three and higher ladders end up bringing out a lot more combo decks like uh, Drytron and Tri-Brigade or Zodiac um, and Altergeist, etc. Um, sometimes that can be a little overwhelming to where even going second is not going to help you very much uh, if they just have a crap ton of negates on the field. Um, so you're just safer going first. Um, so I have this deck. I really like it. I'm going to try to go through it as fast as possible. I don't want to explain too much on what's going on. I'm going to hope a lot of you kind of know what a lot of these cards already do. Um, but I'll kind of explain why some cards are here, why some aren't, and try to have this not be a 20 minute long video on explaining every single card. But I will try to go through every single card. <coughs> <coughs> and I'm going to start bottom from top. Because realistically, every turn is going to end with a Sky Striker Ace Link Monster. Which is just something that comes out by linking off your Ray or Rose, your only monsters in the deck. Um, these cards are cracked. Hayate is there to simply slap your opponent in the face um, and then discard a spell or a Sky Striker spell. Um, it's usually just a free way of doing damage. Shizuku is there to give you a card at the end of the turn as well as losing or making your opponent monster lose 100 attack and defense for each spell in your graveyard and this deck throws out a lot of spells um, Shizuku gets insane value in this deck um, and Kagari is the MVP that will give you it's basically just your engage recycler um, it does give you any sky striker spell in your graveyard back to your hand gives you 100 attack for each spell in your graveyard which means you can use it for um, some OTK um, because again a lot of cards are going to be in the graveyard so you can have a 2500 attack Kagari pretty easily um, but I wouldn't say that's going to be always the case um, then you also have Zeke which is your link 2 um, which usually is something that happens from Widow Anchoring which steals a monster uh, steal your opponent's monster, link it off for Zeke, and now you have kind of another boss monster because Zeke can just destroy or send one of your own cards away to gain a thousand attack permanently. Um, so realistically, you can have a Zeke on field and literally just win with Zeke. Um, because with how many disruptors and negates on field that we have on this deck, um, if it goes right, you can really have a 3500 or 4500 attack Zeke uh, that can kind of just push for game. Um, but then the rest is just an access code package. Um, Halky Fibrax to have Selene, an access code. Um, Underworld Goddess is in there for a little bit of cheese. Um, very, 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 very unlikely um, for this to ever happen. Uh, the only way this would ever really happen is if you had like a Zeke, um, a Hornet drone, um, you were special summoning Rose. You, you would need to have three monsters on the field and then you can also link off one of your opponent's monster. Uh, just another way of uh, getting rid of an opponent's monster that can also negate monster effects your opponent controls. A really strong card, just I don't think I've ever actually used it. Um, there are definitely cards in this that I definitely would take out. Um, not everyone has all the ultra rare crafting in the world. Um, from there, again, the two effect veiler. The reason why that is is because you need a tuner for Helky Fibrax, um, and then it's also your monster negate. Um, the reason why that is a big deal is because this deck is heavily enforced by Kaiser Coliseum. This card is busted. This is pretty much your main win condition. It is basically just a spell version of evenly matched um, where if you have one monster on the field your opponent cannot exceed that same amount of monsters on their side of the field um, so generally every turn for sky striker you're usually just 
ending on a Shizuku and nothing else. Um, so they can't have more than two monsters on the field, um, which is already insane as is. Um, so really the only thing you need to do from there is whatever the one monster that they're going to play, if you disrupt it, they can't do anything else. Um, this Colosseum can be destroyed and then you might be in trouble. Uh, but a lot of the time you will probably just be okay. Um, there are some people that will actually go and get cards to protect Kaiser Colosseum. Um, but honestly, I've seen this just win a lot of duels on its own uh, without being destroyed. And even if it does get destroyed, then the game just kind of becomes fun. Um, I usually like a prolonged game anyway. Um, it works out quite well. Um, so we have just a crap ton of monster negates as well as just draw cards and resource gains um we are running one harpy's feather duster we are not running a jamming waves because technically if your starting hand is to start with the jamming waves or let's say even harpy's feather duster you cannot use it on that first turn there's literally nothing to destroy on turn one uh, but on turn three um with the excess cards that your opponent would have um, it is very likely that Harpy's Feather Duster could get insane value. Um, it'll be destroying field spells and back row, where things like Jamming Waves can't destroy a field spell. Um, so I don't think Jamming Waves is a very good card uh, going first. I really don't. Um, I just completely scrap it from the deck, but Harpy's Feather Duster can give you a lot of value. Um, we have a bunch of cards like Upstart Goblin uh, that can just simply draw a card and put a spell in the graveyard. Um, we have three of the Upstarts and three Foolish Burial Goods Metal Fos Fusion combo. Metal Fos is one of those if it's in the graveyard, you can put it back in the deck and draw a card. This can give you your Solemns, it can give you pretty much anything you're looking for, it can hopefully get you your Colosseum because those aren't searchable. Um, there's so many things that it can give you. Um, you can sometimes have a starting Metal Foes Fusion in your hand and you might not be able to Metal uh, Foolish Burial Goods it, but there are things like Multi-Roll and Area Zero, um, Afterburners, um, all these things can technically destroy your Metal Foes Fusion to get it in the graveyard. Uh, hopefully you don't get it in your starting hand, but if you do, there are outs to, to get it out, um... I run a pot of desires this is a bad idea i do not recommend running pot of desires um because if they were to get past kaiser coliseum and destroy it and get out a full board of monsters there's only four cards in this deck that can actually destroy monsters on the field or really deal with them in an effective manner and that's the two afterburners and the two widow anchors the afterburners to destroy a monster the Widow Anchors to take the monster. Um, if you even banish two of those through Desires, you're going to have a bad time. Uh, because a lot of the time you're going to be wanting multiple Widow Anchors, you're going to be recycling them through multi-roll, continuously negating and taking, and just kind of taking an entire board is what you generally want to do. In the TCG, Widow Anchor would be at three. This would be very easy to do where you could... Uh, be fine running Pot of Desires, because even, even if you banish one, it wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but if you banish one Widow Anchor through Pot of Desires, you might just very well lose because of that. Um, it is very greedy. I wouldn't recommend it. I have it. Because I'm greedy. Uh, Max C is another card you aren't seeing right now that I forgot to mention earlier. That is a must-play card right now. Um, but I'm a rebel and don't play it. Um, there's really no reason. Um... I don't have the crafting points to do it anyway, but I'm just kind of hoping a TCG format comes out where it then becomes banned again, um, and then I'll be set. Um, this is what it would look like in a TCG format to an extent. Um, the two engage, that's the nice thing about the OCG format, is engage is at two instead of one. Um, so engage is uh, overly, overly played and busted, the best card in the deck. They give you a card and draw a card. Um, you can literally play six of these or three at a time to get a plus six in card advantage. Absolutely crazy. Um, the area zero is another thing that can give you a card from the deck uh, to mill three. 
um, find the card you're actually looking for, um, and be happy. Um, the Coliseum we went through, multi-roll is there. Uh, to recycle any of the Sky Striker cards that you did use that are in the graveyard, you can put them back on the field to use them a second time. Um, again, a pretty broken card. I'm kind of amazed it's at 3, but I also kind of know that running at 3 isn't necessarily a good thing, uh, because it can be bricky at 3. I've seen people run it at 3, and if you have your starting hand with 2 multi-roll, you're going to have a bad time. Um, you can multi-roll the other multi-roll, but that is quite a waste of value, for sure. Um, but it is, you know, there, there's ways to work around it, but it is also essentially a Dark Ruler No More. Um, they can't respond to your spell card activations, which is really strong, uh, so you can get out a full play if you do activate multi-roll in that way. Um, you just have to send a card of yours to the graveyard first. Um, sending things like the Metal Fos Fusion is cracked. Um, sending things like Area Zero can have you special summon array if you don't have a monster on field already. Um, you can send uh, pretty much whatever you want. Um, and it can work out uh, quite well in your favor. Uh, Chalice is at 2, can be at 3, it's just another monster negate because again, if Kaiser is on the field, they can't, they can only summon the one monster and as long as that monster gets negated, uh, you're winning the duel. Uh, so a lot, I, I would probably recommend having Chalice at 3, I have it at 2 because I can't make up my mind. Um, Hornet Drones is just your, basically your 6th ghost monster uh, that just ends up also just being a spell. Uh, to boost the Shizuku and Kagari. Uh, the Widow Anchor, again, is just something that you're going to be using to negate more than anything else. You're not looking to take the monster if you have Kaiser. A lot of people will mainly use it to take the monster, link it off. You don't need to do that. If Kaiser Coliseum's on the field, you're already fine as is. They're stuck with that monster. They can't do anything else. You're just going to slap them with Hayate and on Shizuku, call it a day. Um... You only are kind of having the Widow Anchor to take something if you're really running into something that is a legitimate problem. Um, you aren't just using it there to get rid of their monster. If their monster is nothing to begin with, let them have nothing. It is fine. Like, it's not a threat. Don't worry about it. Ego Booster is kind of your defensive card that I don't necessarily like, but it is a really good card. Um, it is there just to protect your Link monster um, from card effects and battle. Uh, because sometimes you will run into, like, just someone who summons a Dark Magician, um, like Dark, uh, or something along those lines, and you may very well might not have 10 spells in the graveyard for Shizuku, um, to handle such a thing, but it doesn't really matter, because even if they were to get past one monster, uh, Rei would then special summon herself from the graveyard and then can go back into Shizuku anyway, so they'd have to go through it a second time. And they very well could have a Lightning Storm or a Raigeki, and then you'd be kind of screwed. Um, and that's where, if that were to be the case, and you do have an Eagle Booster, that would literally just be the most clutch thing ever. I don't think I've ever had that actually happen. But it's just insurance. It literally just guarantees you that nothing bad is going to happen. Um, so it's a nice safety net. Uh, the Shark Cannon is there to banish monsters from the graveyard that are a problem. This is insanely powerful against Eldlich. Um, it's also there to special summon all of these hand traps that people are running uh, because of how popular they are. Ash Blossom especially because of Maxi. Ash Blossoming a Maxi is just going to be the thing to do. If you're not running Ash Blossom, you're just bad at the game. Um, but in the case of your opponent having Ash Blossom in the graveyard, you can actually special summon it to your field uh, to go into Halky Fibrax to go into your access code play. Um, that is your other other means of Shark Cannon. I feel like that's going to be what Shark Cannon is used more for than anything else. Uh, just know, um, because nor otherwise you're having to summon an Effect Veiler, uh, which is kind of a crazy normal summon. Um, so just know that if you're kind of looking to go into access code for game, Shark Cannon is probably the way to do that. Uh, more likely than not. And then you have the four Solemns that are just... They're the cards that say no. You know, you cannot summon, you cannot play that. Um, I wish I had more judgment, I just don't. Um, this is kind of... Um, instead of the Eagle Booster 
um, protecting against the Raigeki, I'm totally fine paying 4,000 life points to negate a Raigeki. I really have no problem doing that. Um, Solemn Strike is the other other card that can just get rid of a uh, monster summon and or activation. Um, and Solemn Warning is also there. I only have the two strike, one Solemn Judgment. I would typically run three Judgment uh, and probably even three strike. Eh, two strike actually. Um, because again, even if you are to negate an activation and destroy it, it is very likely that they can get another special summon in anyway. So Solemn Strike is kind of eh. But it, it's in there just to be in there. Um, either way, that's my Sky Striker list for now. It's been doing quite well. Um, very well, rather. Um, especially if you draw Kaiser Coliseum on your starting hand. Uh, it's usually just game over from there. I really like this deck. Um, I know a lot of other people do. I'm actually going to make another video here shortly and upload it tomorrow as far as a going second um, Sky Striker deck list, which involves a lot more hand traps that I don't technically own right now, but... Um, I'll go over those once we get to that point. Um, and yeah, I'll make that. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think it's better to go first in this format uh, to avoid running into Drytrons, just running people over? Or uh, do you like uh, going second? Um, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'll be also making other videos of Master Duel. Uh, let me know if you like the Sky Striker content. Um, I do plan on bringing out some gameplay videos, uh, maybe talk about some tips and tricks um, and combos that Sky Strikers do um, in order to really have an effective board. Um, we can definitely do that at some time. But either way, appreciate you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the rest of the week, and enjoy the game. And we'll talk to you whenever we talk to you. Ciao.